Today I'm going to talk a little bit about how to visualize an STL and things that you can do with an STL that are very handy. Now here you can see this is the natural state or the typical state that an STL is imported in. So you can see it, you can get some light glancing off of it, you see some of the rough spots and such. Now if you go under uh, view for instance, under view you have several settings here. You can do a see-through all. So if you want to look through the STL, this is a see-through all. You can do the section and clipping and, and all sorts of other stuff. So these settings as far as um, the see-through settings and such, they work standard operating protocol for STLs as they do for surfaces and solids. Now what I want to talk about over on the far right is what's called under visualization facet edges right now you can see face edges and face edges are just that so if I uh, show say this sheet body you can see these are my face edges you'll notice that there are no edges to show on the STL if I turn on facet edges what happens is you can see the system creates a facet not only on the surface but you can also see the facet edges on the STL and this is good as far as visualization visualization goes because now what I can do is let me go ahead and set my rotation reference to here is you can see where I have a large grouping of STLs those large groupings of STLs may and like in this case indicate an issue you can really visualize what's going on because you can see those STLs so this is showing a problem and as you get into these tighter radii these tight corners you can see here how um, I need a smaller facet in order to represent these tinier shapes. Now if I have too many facets, those facets take time to, to render the shade to work with. It can potentially slow the model down. So there's a balance that one has to have with how many facets they have versus the amount of fidelity or how accurate that scan is back to the clay. Now uh, if I come in here and go into what's called facet settings, you'll see I have a refinement factor and so on. This is only going to work for the surface. If I increase this refinement factor, for instance, hit, hit apply, you'll see I have a higher refinement on that surface. If I come over and look at my STL, for instance, and uh, this is a good shot and I reduce my refinement factor, and go up to one, hit my apply, you'll notice that there is not a change on my STL. The STL's facets are set. You can do things like decimate and, and, and such, which are tools inside of the reverse engineering toolbar, which we'll get into later on uh, in a different lecture. But uh, these facets are set. There's no controlling how many facets are going to appear. So if I go over here and say ultra fine, you'll notice how big those facets are. If I zoom up on this and hit my apply, those facets don't change. But if I look at this, you'll see that those facets do change because this is a surface. So this facet setting does many things. One of them is for what you're visualizing for your surfaces. The other is, is just basically um, just facet edges is being able to see the actual triangles of the STL. So this facet settings does absolutely nothing for the STL other than uh, or other than it, all it does is it uh, facet settings for surfaces and such and solids as well. It's not just surfaces. So these are set by the complexity of the STL. Let me go ahead and uh, hide that. Now the next thing that I want to talk about what you can do with an STL and this is where I, I think it gets really important for people to understand that if you are going to an, into an analysis and throw in a reflection you can throw in a reflection analysis on an STL and the purpose of this is maybe you want to get a good idea of how as you can see my reflections are supposed to flow across my STL. Now this isn't going to give you a perfect reflection as you can see it's kind of choppy because the STL is kind of choppy. Again the higher quality STL the better these reflections are but this isn't meant to give you a perfect reflection this is meant to give you an idea of what the flow lines look like. So the stylists, the clay modelers that have worked so hard on giving us a nice clay model to work with um, we want to make sure that we're basically capturing the intent of how they want their surfaces to look and this allows us to do that. You can modify 
course standard, you know, what the what the lines look like. You, you may see a little bit of change in resolution. The other thing this does for us is you can see, in this case, this is supposed to be a perfectly smooth uh, piece of glass, right? Our side transparency, but you can see that there are some obvious discrepancies on that piece of glass. And uh, again, this is just a quick visualization. This gives us a good indication of how this is going to look. And you can go into different scene images and get a uh, pretty good indication of what the highlights are supposed to look like as well. So that's another thing that you can do with your STL. Now, something else uh, you can do with an STL is you can use things like a uh, section to cut a section through it. So if I were to, uh, let's go like this, show mine, and I'm going to go ahead into home. I'm going to go through and create a data plane. We'll go through right about there is fine. Now, when I come into my curve function, I can go into, there we go, section curve. I want to section my STL. And I want to section it with this plane. Let me show results. Now you can see those are my curves. They're going to be generated through that. I'm going to select OK. Now the thing that you have to be cautious of is I'm going to go ahead and move this datum plane. You'll notice that the curve doesn't go with it. That is now a dead curve because it's going through an STL. It cannot make a parametric section. If I go through, go into my section curve once again, pick my STL pick my plane, you'll notice if I go down through here, non-associative settings, if I turn on associative, select OK, I cannot create associative section curves from facet bodies. So it tells you. So that's why in order to generate that curve, you have to turn that off. Okay. Now, there are things, some of these great tools, you can group those section curves, create group. Um, you can output sample points and such, and, and again, group everything into one grouping so you can pick things by name and such, but that's grouping is a whole other set of tools. But in order to use the section curve, you have to turn that off. Now, something else, let me go ahead and draw just a line. And finish my sketch. I'm going to go ahead and project the, this curve onto my STL along a vector. Reverse that and select OK. And again, some of the select objects cannot be replaced or deleted. Create a copy. All right. So as you can see, it throws that curve up on there. But if I go to that curve, you'll notice that it's, again, non-parametric. It does not have the capability of creating a parametric entity or element through an STL. Uh, but now this curve sits right on that STL. So uh, the nice thing about creating your curves is, is some people like to work with sections versus an STL. You can now uh, space out your planes every 100 mils, 50 mils, whatever it is. You can throw a curve on a surface or on your STL. Maybe you have a curve like this opening and you want to, or uh, this, this wheelhouse and you want some radial sections. So you can throw a curve on there, project it on there and do some radial sections. So these are some of the things that you can do to help visualize, help um, create geometry to uh, make your STL a bit more usable. So your rendering settings, like if I go to a wireframe, you'll notice that all I see are kind of the edges here. I set up my uh, uh, rendering with an analysis on there so I can do my analysis on there. So this reflection tool does a really nice job. Now with the section analysis, let's do, I can also come in here and do a section analysis. As you can see with my section analysis, I can um, create very similar to what I did before, sections through whatever uh, plane that I want to, multiple planes, X, Y, Z. So again, if you wanted spacing of 100 millimeters, from a specific point, maybe you want this at 000. There we go. And then you want several sections going all the way through your vehicle. And now that I have those sections in place, 
All right, you can go to output. You want an analysis object, you want section curves, or you want both. If I select OK, you'll notice that I get my section analysis in here. But if I hide that, you'll see I have all of those curves from that section analysis as well. So there are several ways you can go in there to help visualize, make your STL more usable. Uh, these analysis tools are really powerful. They give you a great, great way to uh, make sure that you're catching the true intent of the clay model that this uh, STL's most likely been made from. So, um, if you again you want to visualize what the STL is looking like, you can turn on your facet edges and and again um, really get a good indication of what's going on with the STL. It's very important that you do a visual inspection of your STL like this. Um, it's very important that you go through and and understand the shapes that the stylist wants that the clay modelers put in. So these are the tools that you would use to go in there and do that. Thank you.